Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, that big red building back there, that is my dream shop that I've been working on for uh, going on a year now. Actually, been over a year since we started clearing the land, I think. In the last video on the project, you guys saw the shell of the building go up, just the, the framework. We got the metal, the roof, and everything go on. In today's video, we have a lot of work left to do. We're gonna put a heated floor in this building, so there's a lot of prep work to do, as well as we have to pour some footings for our crane. We're gonna put an overhead rail crane throughout the whole building, so we need to pour footings for that. I believe I got the gutter guy on the way, and we are gonna be moving right along. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Oh, and one more thing. I'm getting a lot of emails from people that are antsy about their merchandise orders. So if you guys are wanting to have things delivered before Christmas, you better get over to dieselcreek.com right now and get that order placed. There's still time, but we are not Amazon. We can't ship things out the next day and have them to you in two days. We're just not that big. The holidays are coming up, so if you want something for the holidays, head on over to dieselcreek.com now, pick it up so that you beat the holiday rush. Alrighty, so what I just finished doing there, I was laying out the piers that we're gonna dig right now for the overhead crane that I'm gonna install in the building. We're gonna have a bridge crane that spans the entire length of the shop and travels back and forth. So to do that, we're gonna have to run some steel I-beams up from some good footings to support said crane. And that's what I just finished marking out here. This is a three by three square, and we're gonna dig that down three feet deep I'm going to build a rebar cage down inside of it and we're going to bring out some rebar and anchor it into the uh, into the slab. We're going to pour this slab as a sleeper slab. So what that means is that this pier, the finished height of it, is going to be just above the bottom of the finished floor concrete. So that way when you come through and you pour your floor concrete, it's gonna tie right into that thing and take a hold of it and they're gonna join forces. just marked a paint mark on one of the flights on the auger there so that I know how deep I want to go with this thing so digging in a box this small I don't really have anything that would be ideal for digging that out uh, a mini excavator with a nice small bucket would really be the best thing but I don't have one of those so I'm gonna try to auger out the corners here and uh, see what I can do with the auger loosen everything up and make us a nice clean edge and then maybe clean it out with the bucket and the excavator or a shovel if need be.
Well, that didn't go very well. I guess I'm gonna come at it with the excavator now and see what kind of mess I can make with that. If I had a 36 inch auger, I think that would work pretty well, but you, you can't put holes next to each other. It just wants to push over into the other hole. So yeah, kind of a lost cause with that auger, I think, but it was worth a shot. Well, after I cleaned it out there, I squared up this corner a bit so I can hit my mark and that way I'm centered with the column when it goes in. The reason it has these two depressions in there, that's where one of those smaller auger holes went. So I just cleaned it out and the auger that I did the big hole with is not flat at the bottom. It has a slight starter bit, if you will, in the center. So I just left those dug out. I'd rather just be on virgin ground and not have any fill in there. So all the crumbs and everything I walked in as best I could. I think it's gonna be fine. So now I got seven more of these things to do. And this one about kicked my butt. So this is gonna be a workout.
All right, so we're building rebar baskets now. And I need to bend up 24 of those things. All right, so there's not much to this. I'm using a very simple pin type bender here to bend this rebar up. This is not the uh, most scientific way to do this. You're not gonna come up with a perfect shape every time. It's gonna depend a bit on your consistency and downward pressure of things. Basically, I just put the mark right underneath the pin where I want the bend, and then using your foot for a little bit of stability and help, just kind of bend her right around there, and voila. Just kind of keep tweaking a little until you eyeball it 90 degrees. And uh, that's part of the reason for the inconsistency is because you are eyeballing things at the end of the day. You could do this on a perfectly flat surface that would help i do not have said perfectly flat surface so i'm doing the best i can with what i got which is kind of the story of my life and i've been making it pretty good so far so you got to be careful as well as you're doing this to keep making sure you're bending everything in the same plane otherwise you'll end up with a piece of weirdly bent spaghetti noodle see actually you can see I messed up a little bit here already that first bend is out of skew with the rear which um, by the time it's all said and done we should be able to straighten that back out So there we go, we're pretty close there. And uh, we just gotta put a wire tie on that now. Make a loop here with my fancy wire tying belt. I used to work on heavy highway construction where we did a lot of rebar tying. I was never primarily involved with that. I would go help out here and there because there's a whole special breed of people that are rod busters. And they are <laughs> different breeds of people. Never really something I wanted to get into. It looked like uh, terribly painful work on you. A lot of kneeling down on rebar and always bent over, tying. But uh, the guys that do it every day, they're quite skilled at tying rebar. And uh, I'm not one of those people, needless to say. That's one down, 23 more to go. All right, as you guys just saw there, I spent all day yesterday building out these rebar cages. These are gonna sit down inside of our footing holes here for the crane. Those cages should drop right down in there, and then we're gonna fill them full of concrete. So before we can put any concrete in here though, we gotta put this foam board up against the wall, and the purpose of that is because this floor is going to be heated, you have to insulate the edges. Otherwise, you'll lose a tremendous amount of heat through the edge of the floor. All right, so I designed these rebar cages so that this long rebar sticking up here is going to be sticking out. There we go.
So these are going to be situated just like this. Now I'm in jail here. So with these cages in the hole, I'm going to build a quick form around these things. And we're going to fill up the concrete to this rung right here. And then when they come and pour the floor, it's going to encapsulate these candy canes behind me. And we're going to bend these rods down before that floor gets poured. And these are going to be bent straight out towards you guys and out that way so that it really anchors this pier into the floor. So the cages kind of lean there, just hanging out on their own. Once we form up the edges here, we're gonna anchor the cages to the forms with some wire, and that way they will uh, kind of keep themselves upright better. That. Cave off part of that hole if I do that. I have to put, use a kicker board to get me away from that edge. One thing great about what I'm doing here is it's all just rough framing, rough forming rather. Nothing here needs to be super critical. It's just holding the top of concrete.
All right, the concrete truck's on the way out the road. I got everything pretty much squared away, ready to go here. We're ready to pour some concrete. Concrete's here. Concrete truck just left and a stone truck pulled in. I'd love to have a bigger shop, but when you can dump a triaxle inside of this one, I guess I can't complain too much. All right, we're back out here the next day. I've been spraying these things down with water. And you might be saying to yourself, man, those things are super ugly. Why didn't you trowel those down or anything? So the reason I left these things so rough and untroweled and finished or anything is because I'm trying to promote adhesion. So when we pour the floor on top of this thing, all that aggregate sticking up there, all that roughness, that is gonna allow the new concrete to bite onto this concrete and uh, kind of become one better, to bond better. That's also the reason we have the rebar sticking out like this and the way we built these uh, candy canes down here we made little loops for the new concrete to form around and harden. These bars, as I said before, now that this is hardened, once I have the rest of the floor prep done, we're gonna take these bars and bend them out this way. And that way these bars are gonna be engaging into the new floor. So that'll help add stability to these piers, which are gonna support the columns that are gonna hold up the crane on the ceiling. You may also be asking yourself why the concrete looks wet, and that is because I've been spraying it down with water. And what that does is slow the curing of the concrete, and uh, it makes for a stronger, stronger cure, basically. But these things have been curing overnight. They're definitely plenty hard enough. We can go ahead and strip these forms off now, and. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be fun because uh, some more concrete spilled out of these things than I had anticipated. So that always makes for a fun time. I'm going to grab a hammer, a chisel, and an impact, and we're going to start trying to get these things removed. Pro tip I've picked up over the years, if you're trying to get out a screw head that's full of concrete, take another screw and use it like a drill into the screw head.
80% of the time, it works 100% of the time. We got all those forms stripped off. We got all the wood cleaned up. We got all the extra chunks of concrete back out of the building here. We are ready to start spreading some of this stone. Well guys, I regret to inform you that I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video off here since we're at a good stopping point. I've got a lot more filmed and it's gonna come out very soon here, but these videos get awful long, so better for me to split them up it seems like uh, more people can find it uh, something they can really sit down and process versus a two hour long escapade so if you guys like the video do me a big favor hit that thumbs up button down below it doesn't cost you guys a dime and it lets me know that I'm making the content that you guys want to see if you're not already be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future updates on the shop or any other projects and like I said at the beginning of the video if you're wanting some merchandise before the holidays head on over there dieselcreek.com now and get your merch and beat the holiday rush that way you know you'll have it in time that's all i've got for now as always thanks for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one